an aesthetic creative job and i would joke with my male uh, uh, you know contemporaries and i would say you spent 3 hours taking a cigarette break i don't leave my table so i'll catch up there was renu saluja who was whom i worshiped and i admired her body of work beyond words from serious dramas like hazar chaurasi ki maa to maine gandhi ko nahi mara to mass entertainers like student of the year and rais i am so excited to speak to deepa bhartia who is currently winning a clothes for her docu series first act congratulations deepa for delving deep into a subject that goes unnoticed by many and welcome to india today i am just relieved it's out there it's taken me what for 5 years so i'm just happy that it's it's out for everyone to watch and see yeah uh, deepa tell me of course you worked in films like tare zameen par stanley ka dabba and hawa hawai uh, was the seed of first act sown there uh, how did you develop the idea uh, yeah i think you're not far from the mark it began just with just seeing how as an industry we engaged with children and then watching amol do it a little differently which was more like workshops and more protected and nobody misses school and a very different environment and then just the interaction with the parent community you know how they um, what their wishes are what their desires are for their children and i felt there's a story here that needed to be explored and uh, so i just started uh, you know spending time with children who wanted to be actors and their parents and going around aramnagar seeing these auditions going for these photo shoots and so i kind of got a sense of the ground reality and then i was like okay there's a subject matter here that needs to be you know explored in detail amazing and tell me of course for me as an audience there were so many heartbreaking moments while watching the docu series uh, tell me about your experience just witnessing those stories those journeys first hand uh yeah it it was yeah it was it was as heartbreaking for me because again it was like i i really hoped i wouldn't see this you know i really hoped that okay i was just being overly concerned uh, you know about this uh, the parent pressure or about the desire for fame and i was really hoping that okay i'm just over processing it maybe it will be really different on the ground but it wasn't it wasn't you know so i think that uh, that's been a discovery for me and nothing prepared me for uh, for the extent to which uh people will go for a moment in the spy a spotlight no it it didn't and and i still cannot reconcile myself with seeing and not all of it is in the show there's so much more that i wow. uh, you know that i've just decided not to bring in because it's too crushing you know it's too crushing it's i'm just getting goosebumps hearing it right now uh, also one of the first scenes in the uh, first episode only has a young girl saying that agar main actor nahi bani to main kuch nahi ban paungi that was so like it just hit you hard it hits you hard uh, tell me uh, is that pressure that kids actually put on themselves or is it actually the parents who kind of uh, put that on them so i think i think it's see i think that there's that line that amol says ki where did the germ come from yeah. they are also victims of of the media you know so that that is there but i, I do think that there are children who really love this world they are really capable uh, they are really talented they they want that expression and and it's a great place to actually engage if you have that you know sometimes you may not enjoy academic uh, you may enjoy music you may enjoy yeah. sports like that there are children who enjoy uh, like when you talk, read about sachin tendulkar he was like i couldn't even finish my 10th because i was so clear i wanted to play cricket so absolutely yeah, that children know what they want to do and so i think the germ can come from anybody often it is the parents but often it it is in the child i yeah. have so much children excited and curious and naturally like just wanting to they show you this they show you that so it all begins with uh, with any of the two intentions the point is what are you doing after that after that how is that journey being planned and uh, how how much importance are you giving to that and how much importance are you giving to a regular environment mm. them along with that you know yeah there is no harm in pursuing your dream there's only right. beauty in that you know but the balance because see unlike other uh, professions you know you you there's a lot of glamour you know and then the all the setbacks happen in the public gaze yeah right if even if you see a, anything like you see star kids being launched and the the the, the like and the dislike is in the public gaze you know any mm-hmm. of us humble we make a mistake nobody knows but yeah. here the fault and the onslaught of you know it's it's very public for any absolutely which is troubling so in that light then the insulation and protection for the child becomes very paramount paramount absolutely 
but it also becomes crushing for them when they may, may not live that dream that they have kind of dreamt all their life uh, have you met someone who has grown up thinking that they'll become a great actor once they grow up but they haven't how has that experience been for you please tell us that those stories are equal equal you know like there are enough people like you see people like uh, like say sarika or sachin pilgaonkar they were mm. very successful child actors neetu singh they made yeah. the transition from kamla hasan they made the transition beautifully it's not like they didn't and i think even today those stories as to, as we see a second innings with darshil or with you know all the children that we've been kind mm. of you know but the thing is there's no assurance yeah no assurance. so i think that it's very important in that zone to uh to keep the child very level headed and not mm. to not to rest because it, it's not just about children it's to all of us this business is fickle this industry is fickle success is no guarantee so in that light having a balance giving uh, you know providing an alternative career option taking a mm. break from being a child actor and coming back like when you come back at 22 23 you're different yeah now you're, you're you know you're mature you're capable of dealing with the pressures of this business but if as a child you pull continuously 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 and you grow up in the public light i think that that whole process can be taxing mm. you know and yeah. uh, like pokesh says that he saying kiya child actor bhul jao aage badho come back go do something else study draw paint do whatever you want make a fresh beginning i think those are very valuable uh, pieces of advice that people have been kind enough to share as we've done yeah. the show it's a good way Absolutely. to look at it you know yeah uh, and tell me like ronish's journey like from 3 years to 6 years you of course seen him grow uh, uh, tell me was it also tricky for you as a filmmaker to uh, kind of not being judgmental towards these parents who are pushing their kids into this uh, was it a very difficult line for you to tread on it is it's a very sensitive uh, the area is very sensitive and the thing is that see i love these children i've been with them for a long period of time you know and even in the course of my engagement with them we were constantly guiding don't do this think of it like that maybe this will be a better option maybe you know so you know as a filmmaker it's not just about taking it's also about yeah you know uh, but they would call me and ask me even the other actors ki i've got to getting this role should i do it is this a good production house is this a good director so i've been part of their uh, journey and they've been part of mine you know uh, and yes it it is it is difficult it it's difficult uh, one shouldn't pass judgment but at the same time there's a need to point out that there is yeah says draw a line let's draw a line there's there's a you know there's a it's just so it's so troubling you know so it's like yeah Absolutely. there's need to yeah just a need to which i always was doing you know and uh, uh and trying to make them see things everyone all of them a little differently you know and sometimes learning from them like their mm-hmm. you know, uh nuggets that they've like adrija mishti's father says yes. you have to keep her protected do it in balance he says that or saloni's mom who's like okay at that time whatever we did but today when i look back i'm not sure i mean yeah that kind of beautiful conversations because they've also then taught me these things you know where yeah. the best way forward and it was so lovely because saloni just took a break when she went into her 10th grade she mm. started she's now she's come back you know in looking for work and mm. it was so beautiful and thank you for coming so you're seeing them find their feet and somehow i feel so excited when i see that happening because uh, you know they've been with me for these last <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I was like, their success somehow feels um, uh, and and what they want to do, the way they want to do it. Yeah, when I see that happening, then that gives me a lot of uh, uh, hope that you know, okay, if it's calibrated correctly, if it's balanced correctly, it's going mm. to be a positive, positive uh, space that these children will grow up into. You know, amazing, amazing. Also, because you have been also a mother to a child actor, uh, tell me how was that experience to kind of uh, see your son perform from behind the curtains and just. seeing him being on stage so i on was on screen yeah he's currently in this outside room sitting at the <laughs> you know grown up at 22 and whatever so uh, <laughs> you know it was like i was just uh, it's it was very different because see he was uh, he was on two films with his father yes very protected environment because like i said his life it was every saturday that these films would be shot there was never a day of school that he missed so mm. he that that set environment when you're constantly yeah. with adults that's a different environment and a workshop a model like stanley ka dabbar hawa hawa is a very different model so i i don't consider him a child actor i consider him a workshop child who within the zone okay. of like all the children there 
emerged and found themselves. They were so good, all of them. You know, Partho is one, uh, one example of it, you know, and he never did anything after that. So technically, he's never been on a... Yeah. Set. No ads, no endorsements. He then just went back to school life. Uh, you know, the, the extent I remember of... Uh, and, you know, we never... Like if some article came on the film, we, we hid. We hid newspapers. Oh. We never showed him a single, uh, single thing. And like I always, I was sharing this with uh, another friend of mine that the, the height of glory, if you say that Partho experienced was when I was editing Ferrari Ki Savani and he was, um, he was, he used to come to, you know, hang around in the edit and Vinod Chopra actually told me that Partho's won the national award and yeah. he called him and he took him up to his room and he showed him his national awards and it was Till today, if you ask Partho, the most important thing is that that memory and Vinod wow. set the benchmark for him. This is the dream. The dream is of excellence. The dream is not of money or fame. The mm. dream is of excellence. And till today, if I ask Partho, what he remembers is that mm. moment. Because, you know, Vinod is such an inspiring figure to be around. And he pumped him up and he's like, this is the world. You have to excel. So for him, that became a more... Yeah. So so I think a more meaningful uh, extract out of this profession is a more enriching focus on it like a more like an academic space mm. or doing theater or you're doing you know yeah um, and then we just left him to enjoy these activities in school mm. he, was, he was winning into school you know one greenhouse versus blue house event mattered more than <laughs> and, you know, these are the real things this is where yeah. I found his feet and then he went on to and now he's studied film he's making his own films whatever you know so I think that uh, we were lucky he didn't want to pursue acting in that sense. I won't say lucky, but we were we were we were, we were good because he didn't have to go through Leave, his yeah. anxieties. He was very clear that in fact I have a clip. I mean, just to deviate, I found a clip of him yesterday. I was sorting my laptop where he's pretending that he's James Cameron and he's directing Johnny Depp and oh. he's how to perform. And he was like, uh, eight years old, so I think you know that dream was much earlier than the dream of acting. You know, this that was a workshop, a fun That's workshop. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Deepa, please take us through the journey of Azhar. Of course, like he rightly mentioned that if he wasn't from the slums, he would have a different career. Like from the Oscar stage to dealing with drug abuse, that kid has gone through a lot. Uh, please take us through that. Uh. Yeah, so he was actually, uh, we were familiar with him because like uh, is mentioned in the show, he was part of, uh, Amol used to run a cinema and theater studies workshop in five municipal schools of Bombay. And he was part of uh, the school there and we were interacting, Amol was interacting with him and uh, and then that kind of success and then to deal with the hostility of your peers because, you know, now you have, like, who in India has reached the Oscars? Which child? Nobody but Azhar, you know? And what a beautiful performance in, in Slumdog. I think the thing I, uh, and when I spoke to him also, I told him that's what you need to remember. You need to forget that you had the ups and you had the uh, downs, but you have to remember that you were incredible and I think that that's all I left him with and I and at the end I that is that is the most important thing and whether he pursues this or whether he doesn't pursue this I think the most important thing is his mother has taken him into a safe safe place where he's protected from this onslaught of media or any kind of exposure that the city often uh, offers mm. uh, you know, people and I and I think he's in a good space if and when he's ready he will come back and I, I think yeah. he's very talented and and his the challenges he's faced are a, a learning that uh, you know when you see the high then what is the infrastructure you need should yeah have it to be able to deal with the yeah the are going to come but we, need, we he's he's a treasure you know he's a treasure he's such a gifted child and he reached so far and so beautifully such a beautiful film yeah. made such love and i think it's okay he's been through something but i think he's quite a star i was uh, I, I had a great time shooting with him and he has the strength to say, okay, I'm going to come back. Hmm. He does or not, it's his choice. But yeah. we think about when we see younger children, we can think that, okay, this, this is the journey of Azhar and reflect. Reflect on it. Absolutely. Reflect. What should we avoid? So that this kind of um, uh, pain that he went through, mm -hmm. don't go through, you know? Yeah. But was he hurt by how the industry treated him and maybe his co-stars uh, kind of not helping him out uh, in his career? Uh, did you open up about that? We spoke a lot and I think I think people did a lot. You know, I think Danny Boyle also, they, they stepped in. They, they did yeah. whatever I understand of what Azar shared. There was a lot of support, but circumstances are not an easy thing to overcome. And, you know, one can't judge uh, the filmmakers or judge the family uh, mm -hmm. in this you know, and I think they did try to do their best from my understanding. A trust was created. You know, children were supported. 
but i think uh, other circumstances are very challenging he lost his father you know yeah. all the things that he went through you know uh, uh, and like i said you know his success was so enormous <laughs> yeah that is what happened to me if i i reach there if i go to the oscars and i'm on that stage and everybody's so many awards it's not easy you know it's not easy to stay it's level headed in that yeah time. so i i don't judge any of the uh, mm. you know, I don't judge him at all i don't judge his family i have only affection for uh, for him and i think uh, and also i think for the filmmakers from whatever i understand there was a lot of sensitivity shown uh, on their part too it's not like you know okay. he, was, uh, he was neglected it's just that the, this profession is like that yeah and haven't we seen it you know two two years back a big superstar is being written off kiska time nahi hai Damn, and you are just so quick to write off people and talent, you know. Now imagine a child in that situation, you know. So and it's difficult, you no, know, to deal with it. Everybody mm. the next day, nobody's knocking at your door. It's scary. That's you know? it's so scary, you know. So, yeah. So I think circumstances are the challenge here in in this case, and really, I just hope that something so good happens. Uh, yeah. Him. Uh, and what was very heartening for me to watch was this uh, teacher from Dharavi that you kind of found who's giving vision to so many kids. Like, how did you find him? Tell us about that. <laughs> I was very interested in how acting is taught to children. I, that's something which you know, I, I, you know, when you take away the naturalness from children, that like I I get troubled by that. So I think that I was really looking to see what is the communication. What are the classes? So I visited. lot of acting schools i looked at where children are being sent in different parts of bombay you know and uh, and it was really interesting because i think that most times people are taught the children are taught by people who don't know themselves yeah you know, like he's he's very inspiring he's very uh, you know he's, he infuses the children <laughs> hope and energy but like when he when he does that audition then the the person on the other side says why are you why are they talking mm-hmm. like that so so it's it's you know uh, it's complex everything here is gray and complex you know so there's all the thing but then then you say the children don't get work but they don't get work was how are we guiding them you know yes, absolutely and if you see that children in auditions is like uh, over projecting over thinking that that is what is attractive you have to just be yourself mm-hmm. like shujit sir says it uh, test says it he let them be themselves yes, i think sir. that's the most attractive part yeah. you know absolutely Yeah, uh, and Deepa, one of your cast member mentioned how uh, filming rape scenes has been tough for her. Uh, I remember I was talking to someone recently about Banda Adrija's project, and they mentioned, uh, like, how can a parent uh, make their kid do something like that? Uh, tell me about your learnings from this experience, and not just as filmmakers, as actors, but also as parents and as an audience. Like, how do we look at it? Do we look at it as a kid just performing a part, or do we? How do we kind of uh, divide the sensitivity from this this performance? See, I think that um, like today, the content is covering a lot of issues that we didn't tackle earlier on in our mm. cinema right so or in our television so subject matter has become more sort of you can see risky more adult there's more you know yeah. so in that light uh, if children are being part of such content then i think there's a lot of there's really a need for counseling there's a need for someone to be there someone to handhold the child through that it's a role if a parent is you know like i think in particularly say in the case of sirfik uh, banda kafi i think it was very sensitively done it's yeah film and it does not exploit the content at all so i think all of this is also the gaze the filmmaker's gaze you know where is what is the filmmaker interested in i think that yeah. film was very sensitive in its handling mm. of uh, and focused on something totally different rather than sensationalizing the event you know it is not like the event so uh, so i think that so i think the gaze the filmmaker's gaze is something i when i talk to these parents and many parents also i always tell them look for the intent what is the intent what yeah. is the thing that something has to be done you know and i think that now in this matter in you know in it's not just uh, this kind of content it could be like you know scene where a child loses a mother or loses a father or watches uh, you know some accident happen and mm-hmm. the mother, any of this requires uh, requires counseling you require yeah. a very safe environment for children to be able to understand this is role playing it's over and that's how it happens in the west you know there are counselors yeah. there is protection for the child you're spoken to you're prepared you're told this is not real and you know when i was talking to sarika she she mentioned this like she seeing there was there was a scene in which my mom is dead and i'm crying and she seemed to scare me i used to i used to be afraid is this going to happen yeah. to me 
you know so she, taking experience and the lead from her you know um uh, then i think this that part has to be handled with sensitivity and you're seeing it in films like don't a film like geraya speaks about an intimacy coordinator intimacy coordinator absolutely so it's the same thing we have to move in that direction you know yeah. so there's more uh, support uh, and then i'm sure there are ways to do this in a refined and a uh, safe manner where the child is absolutely safe you know yeah that, yeah uh, tell me deepa last words like uh, what are the kind of changes that you kind of hope to see in the coming years in the industry when it comes to dealing with child actors i think there is a there has to be a strict uh, strict rigid work hours limit it yeah. is paper it has to be implemented you know it has to be there it's not negotiable children endlessly on set for 8 10 hours is not negotiable we have to put a stop it's like that's the way we work now that can't change and i think that uh, you know the things that various people in the show have spoken about you know uh, guiding them to performance correctly uh, giving them uh, adequate rest time making sure the academic life is not uh, you know uh, damaged or they don't get pulled out of the school system for too long and i think if the there are two there are two institutions in this there's the parent and there's the industry yeah. we work together then i think that there's no way that a well-being of the child will not take place you know i'm like focus on them being safe and being happy and being well that's it if you keep that in your you know if you keep that as your focal thing focus. uh then i think it's good it can happen it's not like we okay. we can do it collectively we can do it you know yeah great and i cannot not talk about you being an editor also one of the few female editors that we have in the industry just proud moment i was just reading a quote where you mentioned how a film is made thrice once it's when it's written once it's directed and of course when it's once it, when it's edited uh, tell me deepa like uh, we all talk about how it's such a thankless job but uh, what has been your experience like and have you seen any major changes in the industry when it comes to editors and the respect that they get uh you know i so love editing like it's such a magical part of filmmaking and um, it's uh, so that that is one thing and i think that um, you know i got so easily drawn to it like even today if you if like i'm old my husband jokes that if i'm not editing i physically fall sick i fall okay. sick if i'm not for some part of the day in an editing room so i think what's changed though i think it's a been a, a bit of a downhill where editing is concerned is, is what i feel because um uh, see it's become uh, many many cooks in the broth in, yeah. in, in that sense because there's now uh, you know there used to earlier be a director that you had to align with and work with but now there's the producer there are pla the platform platform has its own understanding of things so so i think that th th we have to be very careful not to let uh, us be reduced to operators we yeah have to remember that this is an aesthetic creative job and i think that there's a fight to protect there's a fight now to make sure that that is not getting diluted and many of us editors are talking about this we we've, we've been meeting because it's come down to this person's notes notes versus that person's notes versus this person's understanding and in that process originality can really take a hit yeah something Absolutely. new you're trying and you know then we all will start conforming everybody will want the same kind of opening the same kind of ending you know and i've really fought not to do those tropes in this show I think we'll keep our own original rhythm. You know, who says a documentary cannot have music? Who yeah. says you know we'll have this kind? So we've tried to do things in this. We really fought to keep it, and I'm so proud that Amazon was so uh, considerate and you know allowed the vision of this film to uh, this series to be uh, pure and unadulterated. You know, so um, very grateful to Aparna and the whole team there. Um, yes, they they've been so lovely. I mean, I, yeah. I I would have gotten here without somebody believing in this subject. You know, yeah. So, and what about being a woman technician like uh, has things changed especially when it comes to pay pay disparity and also the respect that they get as females on a uh, production company like with so many men around like uh, has has that improved uh, see there are a lot more women editors now when i started there was renu saluja who was whom i worshiped and i admired her body of work beyond words but now there are so many lovely women editing so it's there's a big change in the number of in the representation and there is no i have not experienced pay disparity because of being a woman okay. so there's no i haven't i i can't say that it's there you're good or you're bad that's so great or, yeah no i haven't and i haven't had those kind of challenges uh, um uh, in that sense being a woman i've not ever felt at a disadvantage you know um yeah i mean earlier on somebody used to say that 
you know, I I had I had a child early, and I was editing all through those uh, years. And sometimes I would get the sense that uh, oh, you'll have to go home early. And I would joke with my male, uh, uh, you know, contemporaries, and I would say, you spent three hours taking a cigarette break. I don't leave my table, so I'll catch up. Don't worry about my timings. You know, I, I'll do it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that those things are there. There's a bit of a snobbery that will a woman be able to handle a technical job and all of that. Yeah. And a lot of that has changed now. And That's I think so more of us in the business and, you know, and all of us committed uh, to doing our work well. Uh, I think that my, my bigger challenge is actually with, uh, with the way the profession is getting a little diluted. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what happened to writers some years back. We have to protect yeah, uh, the sanctity of this job, you know, and allow originality yeah. to 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 grow, you know, and to foster. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you so much, Deepa, for doing this. It was so lovely speaking to you.